the forefront of the human rights movement early on, and, and obviously this is a human rights issue throughout the world. So how do we deal with our allies who are in fact oppressing women? And is there a line that we draw where we say this is not acceptable? Well, in some cases, I think the a passage of a law to the United Nations Security Council can have teeth in it and, and really result in direct action being taken. And uh, Angelina Jolie, and the foreign minister of Great Britain are working as, as partners now to try to resolve the problem of rape in war zones. And they're being very effective because the foreign minister goes to meetings of the United Nations Security Council and others and they get laws passed that you impose, problem, you impose punishment on people where the crime com is committed. The United States passed a law a few years ago re referring to the International Violence Against Women Act, AVAW, A, and uh, we didn't go all the way, we did, but we did pass enough to require the State Department to assess every year the degree of, uh, of slavery that exists still in the world. And slavery is much more prevalent now than it ever was during the 19th century. It amounts to about $32 billion a year. And the last report that I read from the State Department, which is the last one they issued, by the way, they, they, they estimate that 800,000 persons are sold across international borders every year into slavery, and at 80 percent of those are girls being sold into sexual servitude. In the United States, they estimated, this is the State Department figures, that 100,000 girls are sold into slavery in this country. And Atlanta, by the way, is the number one trade post for this sexual slavery. Uh, we have over 200 girls sold every month in Atlanta because we have the greatest airport, the busiest airport on earth, and we get our passengers more from the Southern Hemisphere than, say, New York or Washington or Chicago. A and you can buy a girl in the South for about $1,000, a pimp can or a brothel owner. Whereas if you get a girl from Europe or say, from Eastern Europe, she costs between two dollars and $8,000. And so most of the servitude in this country that relates to, to uh, women is for the sexual trade. And we don't do anything in this country about, about uh, prostitution. And a lot of people assume, assume well, every, all of the prostitutes want to be uh, prostitutes. They don't. They're, they're put in there and then they're enslaved until later. And we don't do anything about it. In fact, there's not a, there's not a house of prostitution or a brothel or a whorehouse in America that the officials in that city don't know about it being operated. And the local police obviously know it because they walk back and forth across the street. So the police are either bribed or they look the other way or they're given free sexual privileges. And I know that prostitution is the oldest uh, sin and that sort of thing, but uh, Sweden, for instance, as I mentioned in my book quite extensively, Sweden has tried an experiment that works. It works now for about eight years, and other countries in, in e Europe are, are emulating Sweden. What they do is they make a crime to have a brothel, to be a brothel owner or to be a pimp or to be a male customer of a female prostitute. They don't punish the prostitutes. And uh, this, in our country, we do just the opposite. There are 50 times as many prostitutes arrested in America as are brothel owners or pimps, and in fact, no male customers. And, and, and the Swedish model has really worked. So we just don't uh, want to change the present situation. And I hope that this book and other things will we'll help to correct those problems.